The Groove Rio Learning Center has pre-wired connections from the Groove Rio unit's I.O. to its load panel and includes a pre-configured PID. Let's take a look at how the PID is configured and how it works. In prior lessons, you restored the Groove Rio Learning Center package and I.O. channels were named and configured according to the backup file in the package. Check out those lessons if you need a review. PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative. A PID can be used to control room temperature, the water level in a tank, and the speed of a car using cruise control, to name a few. Here, the temperature of the water in the tank is being monitored. It uses a mathematical formula to monitor an input, called the process variable, compare it to a desired value, the set point, and calculate an output to keep that input as close as possible to the set point. The PID output is made up of proportional, integral, and derivative calculations that are modified by P, I, and D constants that you set. These constants need to be tuned for each PID. Before a PID loop is configured, the I.O. points that will be used by the PID need to be configured. The Groove Rio Learning Center has a PID configured that uses channel 3, the ICTD, as the input, and channel 7, a current output channel, as the output to a resistor that's been epoxied right next to the ICTD probe tip. Based on the calculated PID output, the resistor heats up, causes the temperature to rise, and is measured by the ICTD channel. Let's take a closer look. From the Groove Rio's Groove Manage home screen, there are several I.O. related page options. Click PID Loops. A Groove Rio unit supports up to four independent PID loops, numbered 0 through 3. PID 0 is already configured, named, and enabled. Click the greater than sign to inspect the PID. The PID loop 0 page displays a chart that graphs the input, set point, and output to help you tune the PID. The set point, the target temperature, hasn't been set yet. Since there's no target temperature, the output is zero. We see that down below as well. Fields with green values can be changed. Let's enter a set point. Notice how it affects the output and graph. The PID calculations are increasing the output in order to drive the input towards the set point. The P, I, and D tuning constants have been preset and we see the PID is in automatic mode. More about that in a bit. The scan count is just a counter to let you know that the PID is running and this page is being updated. Click Configure to see how a PID is set up. You can name the PID, and you have a choice for the algorithm, the mathematical formula used to calculate the PID. The default algorithm is velocity type C, but if you're more familiar with the ISA, parallel, or interacting algorithm, choose it for your PID controller. No one formula is right or wrong for a particular process. PIDs have two modes, manual or automatic. Typically, they're set up to be automatic so that they start up automatically. A PID in automatic mode means it'll make calculations based on the difference between the input and set point and change the output to drive the input towards the set point. Manual mode means the PID stops making changes to the output, but it keeps writing the output to the configured destination. The default scan time is one second, and this, along with the P, I, and D terms you set, are very important in tuning the PID. For more information about calculating the scan time, watch Calculating the Scan Rate P, I, and D terms video. The input to the PID can come from different sources. This PID is using an analog input channel, but you could use a value coming from an analog output channel, a memory map address, a control program such as Node-RED, or even another PID. You can also cascade PIDs by simply using the output channel of one PID loop as the input channel for another. 
designate the input channel here. In our case, it's channel 3 with the ICTD probe. You can set up low and high range limits. In this case, it's not expected the room temperature will be under 60 or over 90 degrees. Square root isn't selected. It's used when you want the error calculated based on the square root of the input, such as in some flow control systems. The set point is the desired value and can be set by several sources. We entered it from Groove Manage earlier, but later on in a Node Red lesson, there's a flow with a node that'll set the set point. Next is the PID output. In our example, the output is going to an analog output channel, but there are other options to send the output to. Here, channel 7, the 0 to 20 milliamp output scaled for 0 to 100% is configured. Min and max change are optional. Min change refers to what the minimum change should be before the output reacts to the change. Max change is the maximum amount of change allowed by the output. This can prevent drastic changes that could damage your devices. Leaving the value at zero disables them. Lower clamp and upper clamp sets up a valid clamp range. This prevents the output from going below or above the limits. Switch to manual mode when input goes out of range lets you switch the PID to manual mode until an operator or a host's logic assumes control, like node red or a program running in the secure shell. The force output when input is out of range is only when the PID is in auto mode. You can set fixed values for the output when the input is under or over range. These options won't be used for this example. If the input goes out of range, the output value freezes at its current value. Changes to the output start up once the input gets back in range. Feed forward and feed gain aren't selected, but they're constants that are added and multiplied to the PID output. Click Cancel since we didn't make any changes we'd want to keep. I'll change the set point. I'll also modify the P, I, and D terms to see the changes reflected in the chart. In the chart, you can zoom in and out of the input and output pens, and you can lengthen or shorten the time span displayed. Once your PID is configured and initialized, it'll operate independently until the Groove Rio module loses power. We saw how the Groove Rio unit can control up to four PIDs locally and independently, with no PLC, PAC, or PC required. Also consider how you can add a Groove Rio for PID loop control, as well as retrieving data from existing devices. Unlike other loop controllers, you can analyze and share PID-related data using embedded tools like Node-RED, MQTT, Sparkplug-B, and Ignition Edge.